planes, trains, and automobiles help us get around. But some are now letting their fingers do the walking, logging on to an alarming trend. One guy I rode back and forth with to, uh, to D.C. three times. Kevin Burkroft sells cars but doesn't own one. Yet he manages to roam the country with the click of a mouse on Craigslist. We found him through this ad asking for a ride to D.C. with a stranger. I've taken rides from people and I've given rides to people. And judging by these posts, Kevin isn't alone. Log on to Craigslist.com, click on Cleveland, then ride share. You'll find numerous posts every day looking for rides to Columbus, offering rides to Chicago, the Carolinas, Nebraska. Just send an email. These strangers will pick you up. I want to have someone as a company so I can talk to you. Shamu is also, one of those strangers. She offers rides frequently. If the gas is $20, then she pay me or he pay me $10. And cost seems to be the number one reason ride sharers like Sham and Kevin choose to post. I looked at, uh, at Greyhound and it was going to cost me like 120 round trip. So if somebody is willing to take me for you know, 75 bucks, I'll, I'll go that route. Throw in conversation and conserving energy and it seems like a win-win, but don't be fooled, this is hitchhiking. They're using technology now to get a ride versus standing out on the road, thumbing it. Highway Patrol Lieutenant Josh Swindell had never seen this website until we showed it to him. I wouldn't take that chance okay. of trying to put a stranger in my car. And he suggests you don't either. You're going with a total stranger that pretty much can control you or do something to you and never see you again. But Swindell says if you choose to ride share, protect yourself. Email isn't enough. Pick up the phone. You want to know who you're riding with. I would like to know your address, your phone number. Second, know your route. There are many ways to get from point A to point B. And third, ask for a picture of the car and the tag number. That's good information for an officer to have to try to locate your car. Finally, give all this information to someone you trust and for long trips, set times to call. Don't drive all the way to San Diego and hopefully a week later you're going to call. As for Kevin, he says he does some of these things. Some people want, want a photocopy of your driver's license to make sure you have a valid driver's license. But Sham does none. I never ask those, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I'm, yeah, I just trust people in general. But when you're going from the information highway to the open road, trusting can cost you your life. Running a household of five is no easy task. Just ask Julie Kenworthy. I clean every day. Because in addition to making mini sandwiches, she keeps up and cleans up after her 18-month-old twins, her daughter, and a surely untidy anchor of a husband. He's just a messy eater. He's a big eater, and he just kind of eats like the cookie monster. Julie's talking about Max, not Pete. Max munches, Tommy chews, but when you have only five teeth, rarely does all the food make it in the mouth. Every day I clean the floor, I sweep the floor probably five times a day. And we can see why, but what if this mess wasn't such a hassle? It's cordless and it says it picks up like no other. Enter the swivel sweeper. It may be sweeping up sales, but does it really do that? Well, maybe, um, maybe the dry items, but banana, and dirt. This skeptical mom agreed to try it, but first we had to dirty up her house yeah, a little. Whoa. Although the kitchen I came easy, it. getting the twins to mess up the family room, not so easy. Can you do that? We tried to show them how to knock over a plant and play with their food, but they just kept pushing everything away from the edge. It must have been the camera, so we helped a little. Uh-oh! No use crying over spilled dirt, Tommy. We've got the swivel sweeper. Crumbs in the kitchen were no match for the sweepers swiveling brushes, but the boys ate bananas. Should I just go for it? Why not? Our bananas were smushed more than swept, but eventually they too came off the floor. And although it was easy to open, it didn't really empty, which meant getting our fingers dirty to clean wet food out of the brushes. Yuck! As for the dirt, not disastrous. It was small but mighty and made a mockery of our dropped raisins. The swiveling head maneuvered its way around toys and furniture. But it was kind of nice on the carpet because then you're not dragging out the vacuum. So yes, the swivel sweeper did what it claimed to do, but Julie's still not sold. I mean, she's got Max. But for around 40 bucks, it's a better option than keeping the boys in the cupboards. 
Joy Benedict, News Channel 5. Tis the season when shoppers load up on goodies. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Holiday greetings meet holiday sales, and decking the halls means decking the mall. But all these packages and twinkling lights are actually a beacon for thieves. Inside every mall and every city in this country, there are Grinches ready to steal more than your cheer. And with hundreds of local victims each and every year, it's not hard finding those affected. I lost my cell phone the other day and someone stole it. When I was in Canada, I had somebody pick my pocket. So we headed out to South Park Mall to pick the brains of the shopping season and learn the do's and don'ts of shopping safety. We started with Crystal and Brittany, whose packages first caught our attention. Like six, seven, maybe. <laughs> I have a couple inside of each one. Good job, ladies. You never want a thief to know exactly what you're carrying. So consolidate your bags. And if you're overloaded, make trips back to your car to unload your goods. Done We've that. already done that today. So what <laughs> See, we're good little shoppers. It's easy to see. Pat has security on Up her mind from the way she carries her purse. I always carry it when I go shopping that way. That way I can get at it and I know if anybody else is there. So even though they're cute, smaller bags you carry on your forearm are easy to grab. Pull the strap over your shoulder, <laughs> keeping it close to your body. When I leave the store, I always zip it up and then put the hook on. And gentlemen, you are not immune. I can see that bulky <laughs> wallet in your back pocket and so can pickpockets. So take it out. Put it in your front pocket. And we all need to pay better attention to what we're carrying inside our wallets. Can you imagine if Crystal lost this? I would die. <laughs> Financially, maybe. It would be very easy to steal her identity. She's even carrying her social security card, a big no-no. Be leery of shoulder surfers, people too close for comfort when you're at the register. They could be checking out what's in your wallet. Another reason it's a good idea to shop with plastic and only carry what you need. And when it's time to go, take your keys out before you go outside. Know where you're going. Put your bags in the trunk, get in and drive away. This is not the time to dawdle or make a phone call. Paying attention and taking precautions should keep the season festive and the bells are ringing. Because we all could use more shopping angels this time of year. Joy Benedict, News Channel 5.